Y'all already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life. And we're back. Some of the do's and don'ts. Why you're locked up. I need you to understand something. This is not the world you are used to. What you know to be everyday life, the respect, discipline, morals, the things you do and you don't do, very little of that is going to transfer over into lockup. Things that are acceptable out here aren't always acceptable in there. Please believe me. You're going to see things hear things, watch things transpire that you don't, your brain can't really process as reality. Because for a lot of us, a lot of you guys, it's not your reality and I hope that it never becomes that. I saw things that no matter what I do, I'll never be able to shake. Watching somebody get, you know, hurt is always an uneasy feeling. Whether you like the person or not, just watching that level of violence, uh, kind of, it sticks with you. Keep showing your toes. You get out here in the real world, you think about doing something, those moments come to light in your head, and that little light bulb, blink, blink, comes on, and you think twice before you act stupid. Don't go in there thinking things are sweet. Don't go in there thinking... It don't matter if you land on a, on a minimum custody yard. Just because somebody's on a minimum custody yard don't mean they weren't doing things out here in the streets. Just because he's got a drug charge don't mean he ain't possibly killed somebody. It just means he got caught on the drug case. It's not a world you want any part of. And I ask you to do your best to stay out of there. Do your best to make something shake out here. But anyways... We are going to get into some of the do's and don'ts while incarcerated. Y'all know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So once again, let's relive it. Real quick, 31 days. 31 days until my brother gets out. 31 days I get to go pick my baby brother up from the penitentiary. Now, it always sounds crazy. You hear somebody say your baby brother. Well, that's what he is. He's my baby brother. Little brother, my brother. I get him in 31 days. I look forward to that. I hope that he gets out here and does right. The reality of it is, is most people don't. They don't. I know guys that all they know is the penitentiary. All they know is jail. And everything sounds good. Everything looks good. They talk a big game. And then they get out here into the streets where they think they can hide with the things they do. They can rip and run again and return right back to what they always used to do. And the clock starts ticking. It's only a matter of time before they lock back up. I hope that he learned something this go round, And that y'all can see him on camera. He can tell his experiences, his stories. He can go on to be a good dad. Be the man that I know he's capable of being. Let's get into today's story. I was taught something while locked up early on, back when I was young, and it stuck with me to this day. So I don't ever need any of y'all, anybody, to say, hey, this person said this about you, or hey, this person's saying this, or that person's saying this, because I'm not going to respond to them. I don't care what people say about me. Like Thumper, if you ain't got nothing good to say, remember the movie Bambi, if you ain't got nothing good to say, don't say nothing at all. What, you know, the negative doesn't, I don't care about that. And I'm telling you that because it goes back to something somebody told me one time. And it's got a lot to do with why I won't entertain these YouTubers. And that's what they are, they're YouTubers. A lot of these dudes that are going rah, 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 making all that noise. You can't be serious. Because if so, you knew, you know that that's not how it's supposed to happen. Huh? Nothing wrong with responding to something somebody you say, somebody says to you. But at the same time, an old guy once told me, if you ain't going to do nothing about it, don't speak about it. 
he come across me and another guy was sitting in the chow hall and my, my dude had beef with somebody else but rather than act on it days had gone by and he just kept talking about it man dude is this dude is that i can't stand that dude man if i had the opportunity blah 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 and the old head spoke up and told him seems like all you're doing is talking if you ain't gonna do nothing don't say nothing don't say nothing if you ain't gonna do nothing you're just sitting here bumping your gums all day it's a very good lesson that a lot of people need to learn and take on i'm not here for the drama i'm not here for the back and forth you're definitely not going to speak about me and think that I'm going to address you and send one person in your direction to watch your bum ass. You got to get yours out the mud. You got to get yours like I got mine. You got to grind, put the work in. But you're not going to get it off of me responding to you. And if you ain't going to do nothing, don't say nothing. It's that simple. I think one of the biggest shocks to me at one point this is crazy. Dude sag the jeans. Walk around with the jeans hanging off the ass. You can see all the, the whole backside of their boxes. Sitting out there playing a tunk game. And we was, I hadn't gone to prison yet. I was still in the jail. And the old head was looking around at these young boys walking around. I said, huh. Now you talking about a man that's probably in his mid-60s. Spent most of his life incarcerated. Got out and is now headed back to prison. He says, huh, look at these boys, man. And boys not a word you call somebody locked up. If you call somebody a boy, boy is a derogatory mark for being gay or a way to belittle somebody. If you call somebody a white boy, you you know, you just belittle them. If you call somebody a black boy, see how I didn't even sound right coming out of my mouth, black boy, you just belittle them. But the old head said, man, these boys got the game messed up. Walking around with their pants falling off their asses. There's an older black man saying this. He said, back in my day, when I first got to penitentiary, and the man did 20-some years before he you know, was released. Back in my day, you walked around and had your underwear showing, your bloomers, your briefs, your boxes, whatever you want to call it. That was half the battle right there. That meant you were single. And ready to mingle. I mean, you was down for the get down. That was that was advertising. He said, that's what the boys used to do. He said, now, dudes walk around with their pants falling off their ass. Not knowing if somebody wanted to get serious with them. Half the work is already done. The pants is already down. He said, you ain't got but one more layer to get to before you get to the prize. I remember listening to this old dude say that. And as he was talking, I was just looking at him like, this man done did some foul shit. Like, he's done been parts of some things that just ain't right, man. He's done violated people, seen people violated. He's played part in some things that just ain't right, man. I never thought about it like that. You see dudes every single day walking around with their pants down. I've seen dudes in prison walking around with their pants down to the point that you can see the very bottom lip of their boxes. Like, it ain't even just a glimpse of the boxes, like their whole entire boxes. And in the penitentiary at one point, that he said that meant you were single and ready to mingle. And you were just advertising the goods to anybody that might be interested. You get in there, don't do that. You get in there and you end up in the wrong cell with the wrong man and you got your pants hanging halfway off your ass. First of all, when it comes time to fight, it's going to take you a couple seconds to adjust your pants and get them up to the height they should be so that you and this man can bump. By the time you reach for your pants and try to pull them up, it might be over. You already might be slumped, knocked out. Have a nice press, knife pressed against you. And he might already be working on the second layer. Tuh. Penitentiary, man. Was talking to my homeboy Jacob Aquino earlier. He's now at River North. Which is Supermax. And we were just chopping it up, man. 
just going over a lot of stuff we've seen. We were cellmates in the years we spent together locked up. And I was telling him about something else that had took place at another institution that um, Philly was telling me about. And he brought back up a story that I hadn't thought about in a long time. And I didn't know the outcome of. But he went ahead and filled me in on the outcome. Now, for y'all that don't know, Jacob Aquino is a longtime friend of mine. I went to high school with Jacob Aquino. Was locked up in the detention center with Jacob Aquino. He escaped from the detention center. Kicked the door at the end of the hallway going to court. Ran out and was caught in these uh, apartment complexes called Courthouse Green. But anyway, we were talking and I was telling him everything I had heard from Philly. And he was like, man, you remember the dude that ran up that debt and was locked up with and got transferred? And this is a no-go. Don't do this. Don't run up debts. The last thing you want to be is owing somebody in prison or jail. This ain't like you owe your local power company and they send a bill to your door. A bill shows up in the mailbox. When you owe somebody in there, somebody shows up to your cell. And they're not asking you, would you like an extension, sir? When can you pay this, sir? They've come to collect. And if they can't get it in the way that you owe them, they're going to take it in blood. So that's the basis of this. Don't get things from people. If you had a drug problem on the streets, that's probably what sent you to jail or prison. Learn from that. Because you're going to get in there and it's going to be all around you. The temptation is going to be real. You're going to see guys that are high. You're going to see guys chasing around the dope boys trying to get high. You're going to see guys get hurt because they had somebody give them something. Because in their mind, that little devil is telling them, don't worry about it. You'll figure out how to pay it. And then they can't pay it. So you're going to pay it in blood. But he was like, hey, you remember dude such and such, man? That owed everybody. That got all that dope fronted to him, man. And was running around for like two, three weeks straight. And then them dudes ran up in his cell and hurt him real bad. And he ended up checking in. And he came back on the yard and he got smashed out again. Like dudes hurt him and uh, he got sent to the infirmary. And then eventually they shipped him up off of there to a higher custody prison. I said, yeah, what about it? And he was like, I ended up locked up with that dude. I said, where? I said, I hadn't heard nothing about him. Shortly after that dude got shipped, twin got caught with a knife. I told y'all this before we're going in the child hall boom we got shook down he got caught with a banger I spun around went back to the building and got mine up off of me and that was the end of me seeing twin face to face I haven't seen him face to face since the people were putting handcuffs on him and were standing there holding that shank but he was like yeah man I ended up in Sussex with that guy and I was like yeah I said I bet he was doing the same thing up Sussex he says, yeah, he got to Sussex, man, and was doing the same thing. He was ripping and running, getting high, doing dope. No sooner than he got there, he found out who all the dope boys were. Started borrowing, convincing them he was getting money from the streets. This guy didn't get no money from the streets. This guy was cut off by his family or his family just didn't have it to send. Not everybody's mama has got 150 $200 extra dollars laying around to send somebody because they want to get high. Not everybody's got somebody out here. And to the guys that do, they're blessed. But for a lot of guys, it's just them in prison. They got to get it how they live, get it out the mud. They got to grind to get something. Well, this guy is getting hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars worth of drugs given to him under the pretense that he could pay for it. Oh, my people, my people will send you the money. My people will send you the money. Oh, don't worry about it. I got it on the books. Give me a list. I'll order it. We used to always say, if you can trick them, you can beat them. Looking back on that, that's a stupid statement. It's because you trick somebody, you might have beat them at the moment that you tricked them. But it don't mean, you know, that you can really beat them. Damn, I keep biting my tongue. It don't mean that you can fully beat them. I said, well, what happened with dude, man? He said, they banged dude up up here, man. A bunch of dudes jumped on him. He got poked up a couple times. Got put in a hole. Wouldn't tell the guards. Who had stabbed him? Who jumped him? He said it was the same thing as Greensville, man. He got up to Sussex and kept doing the same thing over and over and over until 
it got him hurt really bad. He would go on to tell me that that dude got out the hole and they were calling wreck. And he had been out the hole maybe, you know, a couple of days. Got his hands on either a knife or some type of like industrial razor blade. I'm not sure which one, something sharp. Went out on the wreck yard and the guys were going to jump him again that day because nobody had been paid. Nobody had received not one red cent from this dude that had done their drugs so the guy was walking you know the lap walking the track walking laps by himself walked out to the middle of the wreck yard field and i'll have twin break this story down further for y'all hopefully he gets out soon but he said the man walked out in the middle of the field and that the dudes that were waiting to jump him were waiting over beside the building because that's where they were going to do you know do it at and he said he looked around at everybody Looked up at the sky. He said the guy just looked confused. Lost. Said he didn't look scared. He looked like he had just completely given up. Like he didn't care what happened no more. He said right there in front of everybody. He pulled something out of his pocket and cut his own throat. Sure people watching this were up Sussex when that happened. Like I said I'll let Twin because there's always going to be somebody. You know one of you little Karens or Lewinsky's going to say something. But he said the guy. Still right there in the middle of the wreck yard. And with everybody watching him and dudes looking. Took something out. And cut his own throat. Laid right down that wreck yard and died. All because he broke. One of the cardinal rules. Don't be getting things from people man. Don't go in there and think you're going to get high and just get by. Don't think if you can trick them you can beat them. You get in there and get to owing somebody something. They're going to come for it. Like I said, you're going to pay them with what you owe them or you're going to pay them in blood. I guess that boy knew he had enough time laying ahead of him and he had ran up such a big debt that there was no way he could pay that debt. There was no way he would ever be able to get these guys up off his back unless he told on them. And then that's not getting them off your back. That's just putting a target all over you. Now you ain't just got to deal with them guys, but you got to deal with everybody that they deal with. Everybody that rocks with them is now coming after you because you're the police. You're a snitch. You done told on another inmate, right? You ain't no convict. You're an inmate. Yeah, so dude took his life. Do not take things from people. Do not indulge in the drugs. Don't you ever go get something that you can't pay for. Even if you can pay for it, I suggest you just wait till commissary comes and go get your own stuff and just be hungry until that day rolls around. Guys are going to cherish and covet everything. Because in there, the fact of the matter is, you ain't really got nothing. Every little thing you got means a lot to you. From that toothpaste sitting on the counter... To that, that TV, if you're lucky enough to be in a state with TVs, to your clothing, to your pictures, to every single last letter or piece of mail you got, all that stuff is dear to heart. Things like commissary, shoes, a little jewelry you can acquire along the way are all off limits. You do not touch the next man's stuff. I told y'all early on in my videos about a cellmate I had that claimed he had halitosis. And for y'all that don't know, halitosis is a condition where your breath just constantly stinks. That dude would be talking to me and it was like I was talking to a dragon zombie. Like this dude smelled like he ate roadkill three times a day. Like he had some of the worst breath I'd ever smelled in my life. Like all his teeth just died and stayed there. Me and dude eventually get to fighting and I had him roll his stuff up and get up out of my cell over toothpaste. Now, I'm not a petty dude. If you ain't got nothing and you're in the cell with me, I'm not going to let you go hungry if you're an IA person. Now, if you got some messed up charges, I'm going to be honest with you. If you got messed up charges, I don't care if you starve. I really don't. Judge me. Love me, hate me, I said it. If your charges are messed up 
and I'm forced in a situation to where I have to live around you or be around you. I'm not going to help you in any way possible. I'm not going to keep people up off of you. I'm not going to donate to you being hungry. I don't care. But a cellmate I had, he went to commissary. And I'm still in the jail. I'm at Riverside at this point. He went to commissary every single week. And when he would go to commissary, he was a, a drug addict on the streets. His main thing he bought on commissary was coffee and sweets. That man would max out on how many honey buns he could buy. He would max out on Snickers bars, Kit Kats, you know, uh, all the sweets, the duplex cookies. Like this man was a sweets junkie. And I knew where it came from. He told me, he said, I started messing with the sweets when I was doing that dope on the streets. He said, man, it wasn't nothing like laying in the bed eating a Hershey bar after I just got high. Well, now he's locked up. He ain't really, he's still doing it here and there, but he's more or less not getting high like that. But he's still indulging in the sweets because that's what he's used to. That's what he was doing before he got locked up. At no point in, I just bit my damn tongue again. At no point in time, did this man buy any toothpaste? I remember when he moved in the cell with me, his toothpaste was like rolled up. It ain't like on the streets when you, you it gets to the end of the tube, you just throw it away. You take your toothbrush and push all the last of that toothpaste to the end, and then you roll it up and try to get every last drop out before you open a new toothpaste. He had this rolled up thing of toothpaste sitting on the counter, which couldn't have been maybe good for one or two brushes left. And he brushed his teeth a couple times, and boom, didn't have no toothpaste. He'd be trying to talk to me, and I swear, I mean, if he was a cartoon character, he'd be somebody that every time he opens his mouth, a bunch of flies just running, you know, swan dive off his tongue with no wings. Or gnats and stuff would start coming out of his mouth. Or when he spoke, if he was a cartoon character, like green fumes would come out. Dude's breath was funky. He brushes his teeth a couple times, and I don't see no more toothpaste laying on the counter next to his toothbrush. I start to notice, and I buy the expensive toothpaste, the Crest, the Colgate. And he had what well, Pepsi Dent, we call it Poop Sedent. Because that shit does not get your teeth clean. It does not get your mouth clean. It does not clean your tongue. That Pepsi Dent, if you've been locked up, you know about the Poop Sedent. You can brush your tongue with it and brush all your teeth, and your breath still stink right after you used it. It was just the cheapest generic toothpaste you could use, and that's what he had to begin with. I start noticing that my toothpaste is missing. I told you I'm not a petty guy, but cardinal rule, don't touch nobody else's stuff. I tell him, hey, man, I know you are not using my toothpaste. I know for a fact you are not taking my toothpaste and running it across your funky-ass toothbrush that looks like it's been used to clean old dirty Timberlands. No, 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 I ain't touch your toothpaste. I said, all right, man, I know he's lying to me. I know how much toothpaste I had. This was a whole tube. And this dude would, you know, I'd see him randomly come out to sell him, just brush his teeth. I'd be sitting out there looking at him like, this dude ain't got no toothpaste. How the hell is he brushing his teeth? He's like, nah, nah, nah. I just get the toothbrush wet until my commissary shows up and I brush my teeth. And I'm, you know, I said, all right. So I end up, I go and get him a tube of toothpaste from somebody else. This is before we went to commissary. And I said, look, just give it back to me on store day. What can I, what'd you order? Oh, I got Pepsi Dent. I said, all right, well, I'm going to go to somebody, one of my homeboys, get you a Pepsi Dent, just give it back. Store day comes around. He's like, hey, they didn't put my toothpaste on my list, man. Can I pay you with something else? I said, yeah, that's fine. You know what I mean? I, I ain't tripping. Long as you, you know what I mean? I holler at my homeboy and make sure he's cool with taking that. So he gives me the same amount of what the toothpaste cost, just he gave it to me in sweets and soups and stuff. So I holler at my homeboy, hey. They didn't give him the toothpaste. Are you cool with taking this? Yeah, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm cool. With him having hollow toes, to do brush your teeth, brush your teeth, brush your teeth all the time. Sometimes two, three times during lockdown to the point it was just annoying. Like I told you, that noise just starts to scratch into your head. Always brushing his teeth. He runs through this tube of toothpaste. An entire tube. I think I just bit my damn tongue for like the fifth time. An entire tube of toothpaste in the first four or five days. I said, man, you better make sure you order commissary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I went to commissary. I ordered toothpaste. Don't worry about it. Commissary shows up again. He didn't order no toothpaste, man. And I know he didn't order no toothpaste because he left his commissary slip laying on the counter. I picked it up and looked at it. And nowhere on it was toothpaste. It didn't say out of stock. It wasn't on there. He didn't order it. A little more time goes by. 
My toothpaste is coming up missing. I see, oh, bro, I told you, stop touching my shit. Do not touch my shit. Like, we're cool and all, but that's just one of them things you don't share. We don't share toothpaste. We don't share soap. No, you can't wear my boxes. Like, I don't know what y'all, on the streets, everybody might use the same toothpaste. I don't know you like that. You ain't gonna have my gums all swollen up, my teeth falling out my mouth, because whatever you got going on in your mouth happens in my mouth because you're using my toothpaste. Stop touching my shit. Bro, I use tripping. I ain't touching your toothpaste. I ain't touching your toothpaste. I said, all right. So the next morning, I get up. I brush my teeth. I take toothpaste. And instead of tightening the toothpaste cap all the way, I just barely thread it on just a little bit. And I lay it beside my toothbrush. We come in for count. I go to brush my teeth before lunch. You know, you nobody you shouldn't be eating with shit mouth. Brush your teeth. You want to taste your food, not your mouth. I take the toothpaste and I go to unscrew the cap where I barely screwed it closed and the cap is tight. I said, oh man, this, this is the third time I done told him I'm not talking no more. So he comes in the cell, we lock down and I'm sitting there. I got my little earbuds in and my little radio and I'm listening to my radio. And I'm thinking to myself, Jay, don't be that petty. Don't be that petty, man. Don't be that guy. You don't want to, don't put hands on somebody over some damn $2 or something toothpaste. Don't do that. But it wasn't about the toothpaste. It was the cardinal rule of you don't touch somebody else's stuff. And you're lying to my face about it. Like you just disrespect me all around the board. I told you things that don't happen in the streets happen in there. You would never fight nobody over no toothpaste in the streets. So I'm sitting there with my earbuds in. I heard him go, you all right? And I heard him clear as day. And I act like I didn't hear him. I'm just staring off in his space. He's still trying to talk to me. I lift my mat up. I get a magazine out. I'm looking at the magazine. Hey, man, you all right? I look up at him. I lay the magazine down. I take the earbud out. I said, what's up? You all right? I said, nah, man, I'm not all right. What's wrong? Something happened? I said, I thought I told you stop touching my stuff, man. You've been locked up long enough now. I've been locked up before you know. You don't touch nobody else's stuff, man. This is all I got. I pay for this. This is mine. I told you not to touch my shit. But how many times I got to tell you I ain't? He didn't address it in the manner he should. Jay, look, I'm sorry. Believe it or not, that would have looked, went a long way. But the fact that he was spending all his money on Zoom Zooms and Wham Whams, cookies and candy bars and all these sweets and bags and bags of coffee and not buying no toothbrush, no toothpaste made it that much worse. Because it means your intentions were just to brush your teeth and use my stuff and then sit over there and eat Snickers bars because they're more important than brushing your teeth. Jang, okay, yeah, he starts getting all loud, so... I take the other earbud out while he's in the middle of running his mouth, lay the headphones and stuff down, get up, and I shove him. He backs up to the door, bounces off the door, comes forward. We go to fighting. Ends bad for him. I ain't no gorilla. I ain't no killer. I can fight. I will fight. If you push me to that limit, you disrespect me, then I'm going to give you exactly what you're looking for. It's no longer who I am, but in them times of being incarcerated, that's who I learned to become. That's who most people adapt and become this is a dog eat dog world in there you don't want to get ate you can't be disrespected had i let him scream on me like that and base up on me then from then on now hey you might as well just take my toothpaste there's my commissary too now that you chomp me and i ain't do nothing about it we get to wrecking in the cell boom 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 i got him you had enough you had enough yeah yeah you good let me go let me go let me go i said i'm gonna let you go but if you swing on me you know what it is man i didn't gave it to you once don't touch my stuff no more. All right, all right, all right. When these doors pop, roll your stuff up. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, get out of my cell, man. Because you're going to continue to touch my stuff. I'm sure other dudes is, you're going to have to deal with, and they're going to find out the same thing. Man, I don't want to move out. I'm not asking you to move out the cell. You're going to roll your stuff up. I'm going to roll it up and throw it out. He rolled up and rolled out. Now, I don't want you to take the story I just took as I'm glorifying violence. I don't want you to take that story like I'm sitting here like I'm King Kong at all. Like none of that. Because that's not what the story was meant to portray. The fight happened. That's what it was. Had to put that in there to let you understand the severity of it. How quick things can go from you and him being cool in the cell to you and him fighting. I warned him, asked him. He did nothing to fix the situation and continued to take advantage of me. I know it's toothpaste. I understand. Like somebody commented the other day and said, you know, um, 
I got a family member that's a guard, and they said the guys will fight over stuff as simple as a pack of cookies. It's not the cookies they're fighting over. It's the principle. It's the fact that you've given somebody your word, and you haven't lived up to it. Pause. Red Bull. It's the fact that you're trying to take advantage of the next man. Or that you continuously do something and you have to teach somebody and show somebody that they're not going to do that. Remember this saying, and it was another thing I heard, and I remember this to this day and I know it to be true. Lessons not learned in blood are soon forgotten. Did you hear that? Lessons not learned in blood are soon forgotten. Means you can tell somebody something a thousand times and they'll continue to do what you told them not to do or what they shouldn't be doing. It goes in one ear and right out the other. They don't process it. But the first time you react to something, you hurt somebody, you make them taste their own blood, you draw blood, or you react in a violent manner, it's crazy how that will be what teaches somebody a lesson. They couldn't understand when you were saying it. They didn't hear you when you were talking. As soon as you go upside somebody's head, hey, lesson learned for a lot of guys. As much as I'd love to sit here and talk with y'all some more, kick it with y'all some more, get some more into the do's and don'ts of being locked up, I have a job to do. As we all know, it is Friday, Friday, Friday. That means it is payday, payday, payday. Just bit my tongue for the sixth time. Damn it. And you know I got to get these guys their money. Got to get the men paid. Once I'm done with this, do a little editing. I'm going to back this up out of here. Head, pick up my checks for the week. Hit the bank. Get the guys their checks. And we're going to call it a day. I love all y'all. Hope y'all had a great weekend. If you're going through something in life, just know it gets better. Hang in there. You know I love all y'all. I appreciate all the support. Everybody that takes the time out their life to watch and support what we have going over here, you know, at Let's Live Life. But anyways... These jails, detention centers, these facilities, their prisons, they're all just crazier worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. And as always, you know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? Like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life. And to all my real ones, and there are some real ones watching, because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute.